Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady, and our first story for today. Made the mistake of wearing my school uniform to Ulta, lady chewed me out for being covered in nail polish and making poor life choices. And before the story starts, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who's signed up for this channel. So let's begin. For context, I'm in beauty school and we're required to wear all black since we work with clients, basically as training for our future careers. As part of it, I usually wear a small black apron because otherwise all my clothes would be caked in acrylic and nail polish. However, I blanked the other morning and forgot it. So as a result, I looked like I'd rolled around in paint and chrome powder. Whatever, they're old jeans. On my way home, I realized I'd run out of face primer and stopped by Ulta, where the employees also wear all black. I'm a regular there, basically first name basis at this point, so they all say hi to me when I come in, and one of them started talking to me, asking how school's going, etc. I get this weird feeling, like I'm being watched. Behind the employee is a lady who looks like a typical Karen, just staring at us. I whisper to her that the lady behind her might need some help, so I step out of the way. Lady, I'm looking for a... looks me up and down. Young man, you are filthy. Have some pride in your appearance when you work. Me. Ugh, I know. I forgot my apron. Crap happens. Lady. Excuse me? Where's your manager? Me. What? Oh, sorry. I actually don't work here. Lady. It's one thing to look like an absolute slob in the workplace, but another to lie to a customer's face to get out of trouble. I spend hundreds in this store, you know. Me. This is my uniform for beauty college. We're required to wear all black. I'm training to be a nail tech. That's why I'm covered in neon powders. I'm sure you can smell the monomer on my clothes. Lady. I heard everyone say hello to you by first name. How else would they know you unless you worked here? Me. Um, because I shop here a lot and my name pops up when I put in my Ulta card. Lady. Where is your manager? I'm done with your poor customer service and sarcasm. Me. Oh, for F's sakes. I reached into my tote bag and pulled out my badge lanyard and showed her, covering up the name of the company with my thumb, of course. Me. This is my actual job, ma'am. She looks at the badge, which has my face on it, my name, and it says in very large letters at the bottom, pharmacy assistant slash client relations. Important note, this position is the lowest on the pharmacy totem pole, lower than pharmacy technician. Lady, well, you don't need to be rude about it. And who gives up a job as a pharmacist to be a nail technician? You need to reevaluate your life. Your parents must be so disappointed. They thought they'd raise someone smart. My son's at an Ivy League school studying to be a pharmacist, and he would not be welcome in my house if he made such an idiotic decision to throw his life away like that. Me. My sister got into there and specifically chose other Ivy League school because the one your son goes to never had a PharmaD program. Ever. Apparently that set her off because I can't even remember what she said at this point because she went ballistic, screaming every obscenity in the book and calling me a liar, etc. At this point, the poor employee I had been talking to hadn't made a peep and the manager and security guard came over to see what the commotion was all about. I'm pretty sure I watched her die a little inside when she saw who it was making a scene and very quickly started to usher her in the other direction. Me, to the other employee. Man, is she always like this? Employee. Yeah, she comes in like once a week and always goes crazy because of some coupon or pricing issue. I'm sorry, I should have said something, but she freaks me out. Me. No worries. Best not to provoke her. After all, her son is so special he's getting a pharmacy degree from a school that doesn't offer it. Learned my lesson that day, though. Don't ever wear black to a cosmetic store. No, I can't unlock that case for you. So yesterday, on my lunch break, I was at a well-known computer parts store helping my brother pick out parts for a new PC. I like to think I'm extremely knowledgeable about computers. I'm a programmer, after all, and I built my first desktop 20 years ago, and I've done countless since. So I'm escorting my younger brother and my father through the store, recommending parts and explaining why I recommend what I do. Between the way I'm dressed, I dress business professional for work, and the way I'm talking, it's actually not surprising that someone might think I'm an employee. Product knowledge is one of the keys to selling, after all, and it probably sounded like I was trying to get a sale, if you disregard the content of what I was saying. At any rate, it's fairly common that I get mistaken for an employee, because computers are my professional expertise, and my attire is similar to what the store salesmen wear. So we get the parts picked out. 
for those who care, Asus Z170, 16 gigabyte DDR4 2400, an i5, an aftermarket heatsink, a case, and a license for Windows 10, organized in the cart, and we start talking about when I'll be able to put it together. I say I'll come over when I get off work tonight and build it, but I need to get back to work. Turn around and this older guy, older than me, probably late 40s, looks flat PO'd. He's standing maybe two feet away, staring at me like I'd fed his firstborn to Mike Pence. About time, he snaps. Yeah, you need to get back to work. I need you to unlock the processors for me so I can get one. I'm a total a-hole, since you probably don't know me, and when I get an urge to be a jerk, I'm compelled by a lack of will, fueled by a dearth of empathy, to carry through. I cock an eyebrow, and rather than just say, I don't work here, I act as if he should know I don't work there. Me. Excuse me? Who the F are you? Sangry. You can't talk to me that way. I'm going to report you to your boss. Me? Go ahead. I talk to him that way too. Sangry. Well, I'll just take my business elsewhere. Me, cheerfully. I'm so heartbroken. Go F yourself. About this time, the employee who had been helping me and mine caught the exchange, probably because of my liberal and loud use of the word F. He'd been continuing with my family because my father wanted to, and did, buy my sister a laptop. He comes rushing over as I start walking away and says, I'm sorry, he doesn't work here. The look on the customer's face is priceless. I could see the wheels turning as he tried to find some way to keep from being a sea gobbler. Sangry. You can't let him talk to your customers like that. Actual employee. Sir, you confronted him. Anyway, he's leaving. I smiled at the employee and said thanks for all your help and walked away with both middle fingers in the air towards that raging A-hat. I was late back from lunch, but I probably would have been anyway. That whole exchange was maybe a minute or two. As soon as I got in the car, I started laughing and thought about this sub. I am not a valet. So when I was 14, my middle school had a formal event for students heading to high school. It was at some convention hall or something. Honestly, I don't remember where it was, but there were several different rooms for different groups. The school rented out the dining hall and served an elaborate, many courses meal designed to embarrass kids like me who didn't know there existed such a thing as a salad fork, much less that it couldn't be used for steak. Formal wear was required. I had stopped wearing dresses and skirts a couple years before and with the support of my mother decided pants was the way to go for me. Nothing overly masculine, more like office chic. Black pants, purple button-up, black heels that made me walk like a penguin. Everything was going okay at first. Halfway through the dinner, the button on my pants broke, just popped off and disappeared under the table. I ignored it for a while, but the zipper kept falling down, and I'm sure it looked like I was doing funny stuff under the table because I kept reaching down to yank it back up. My table was the last to be served, so I took the moment before they brought out dessert to slip out. My mother had driven me there, dropped me off, and then went to watch a movie nearby with the parents of one of my friends. She'd left her car in the parking lot and left the keys with me in case I needed to get in, because I panic, as we have established, and may feel the need to hide. She begged me not to, because this event was really expensive, but she was a smart lady. I was doing pretty well, I thought, feeling very grown up. So I did a quick jog through the lobby and out the front doors as gracefully as my wobbly penguin dance would allow. There was a car parked right in front of the doors, idling with a man in it. I ignored this and kept my head down, got to the car, unlocked the door, grabbed the little tube of super glue from the glove box, and glued my pants together so they'd stay put. Remember, I've got maybe 15 minutes to get out to the parking lot and back in before I'm counted missing, and the teachers are there watching to be sure we behave. So I locked the car and started penguin running back up to the front doors. Just as I passed the car that was still idling, I heard a man call out, Hey! Of course, I turned to look because I was alone out there. Who else could he be talking to? This man in a nice suit was standing next to the car. He was smiling, very friendly looking, not creepy at all. Surprisingly, it put me at ease. Then I saw his arm begin to raise, almost in slow motion, as he gently tossed his keys the five feet between us, I caught them automatically. Park it close, will you? I may need in it. He was still smiling. I was very confused. Now this is when you need to know that I have a certain fear. Operating a car in any way. I don't know why. It's irrational. That's what phobias are. Irrational fears. Even the thought of sitting in the driver's seat is terrifying to me. 
and here I am holding someone's keys with him expecting me to park his car. I panicked. In my mind, I explained that I'm not a valet and cannot park his car as I'm only 14. In my mind, I passed his keys back to him and calmly returned to dinner. In reality, I made a strangled sound, kind of like I tried to form a coherent sentence beginning with no, but lost it to mindless terror after half a second and my tongue turned to molasses. Then I tried to scream. I threw his keys in the air in a wide arc in his general direction, then I turned and ran back inside. I heard the keys hit the ground as I disappeared through the doors. I think the man made a confused sound, but I was gone by then, back to my seat, trying to pretend I was invisible. I got through the rest of the night, and the man was nowhere to be seen when I left, but it was not a fun night. To this day, I wished I'd saved my mom the money and decided not to go. I spent the night terrified that I'd make a mistake with their ridiculously fancy meal and embarrassed to be the only girl not wearing a dress. The one friend who also attended spent the night ignoring me. A guy mistook me for a valet and the steak was dry. Thank you all for watching the video to the end and I'll see you on the next one.